Well, hello, everybody. Long time no see. How you doing? <laughs> I'm uh, Willie B. Coming to you live from the heart of Atlanta, Georgia. And we're, tonight, we're talking about flesh and blood tonight. One of my favorite heroes, Azalea. Hopefully one of your favorite heroes, too. Although, boy, can she be unfun to play against. Almost feels like you don't even get to play the game sometimes. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? How's everybody's night going tonight? I'm just chilling, sipping a nice, relaxing Sweetwater IPA. One of the lower quality IPAs on my list. But it tastes just fine, and it was on sale. <laughs> Usually one I would avoid, though. But eh, it's better than no beer. But yeah, so we're talking about the new boogie woman on the block, Azalea. Would you believe it? From total laughing stock, just the most joked about, weak sauce, not very flashy, not impressive hero, Azalea. Now, is actually a bit of a powerhouse. For certain decks, uh, one of the scariest things you can run into. <laughs> This uh, past weekend, we had the Battle Hardened and uh, PTI, or I guess ProQuest Plus now. What are your thoughts on ProQuest Pluses, everybody? They did away with PTI events, and now they're ProQuest Pluses, which, honestly, in my opinion, are much better. There's uh, actually, like, prizing for top eight, where before it was, like, first place or nothing. Uh, you get some pretty cool promos. And uh, did first place get better, too? I have to think first place got better, too. So I'm a fan of the change. Uh, What's up, Nicholas? What's up, Damien? Time to take out Will. <laughs> Just for a while? You moved on from him? What up, St. Havoc? Um, the India Pale Ale. Got its name because back in the day when they were shipping beer across the ocean on sailboats, <laughs> uh, the, the regular loggers would spoil and turn bad. So they would uh, throw a bunch of hops inside thus created the India Pale Ale, and uh, it, for whatever reason, the hops would keep it from spoiling, and uh, created the bitter beer that we know and love to this day. <laughs> anyway, so, back to Azalea. Um, I played in the Battle Harden this past weekend, and uh, ProQuest Plus event. Brody was there on Azalea. I think the exact same list that he won the, uh, the calling with. We can bring it up. Um... And he top aided both events, got second in the one. I believe you guys watched that. He lost to Jeremy on Dromai, and Dromai was uh, ushered into Living Legend by a wonderful human being in the form of Jeremy. Oh, we can actually check uh, Battle Hard in Atlanta. Let's see if he made any changes. I'm going to assume not, because he literally, like, <laughs> flew back from Phuket. <laughs> So, he had, like, a flight to figure it out. I guess he spent some days there, too. But no, this looks identical. Yeah. I'm, the point I'm trying to get at is, like, I think Brody's perfected the list. <laughs> like, even Spell for a Cloak here. I was running this in my Pro Tour list in Los Angeles, and I thought I was so sneaky about it. I was like, ah, the Kanos are never going to see it coming. It was like every Kano I ran into is like, are you doing the spell freight thing? And I was like, yeah, I'm doing the spell freight thing. <laughs> I mean, it's not that sneaky. It's kind of obvious. Like, how, how else are you going to find so room for spell void? But uh, in any case, I went off on a little tangent there. So yeah, Brody did great. Brody evolved from the person who won the battle hard in that same weekend in Phuket. We can see that. Actually, it's on here somewhere. There's Phuket. Where's the next Azalea? Battle Hard Phuket. Now, this list was much more traditional. Uh, he's got more blues, so he doesn't necessarily need the spell void. Even though I think it's still kind of worth it. Um, Battering Bolt, the more traditional popper. Although he is running three down and dirties, which have just been the best poppers. Although now, can we get rid of them? Do we need them for Prism? Um, one, Endless Arrow, as opposed to three. 
He's got the judge, jury, executioner. He's still on Deadeye. So even a more traditional list is actually still doing good. It's just, as someone who played a list like this for a while, especially judge, jury, executioner, I'm surprised uh, Teddy was still on it. Like, this card just never felt good in my testing. That's not true. Once in a blue moon, you would reveal it off of uh, Ravenous Rabble. Or it would just be on top when you checked with your your cross strap, but like aside from that, it always felt terrible. It was like whenever I grabbed it off of knock, it's like, well, I could have grabbed red or sleep dart or so many other arrows instead of judge jury executioner that are probably going to be doing a similar thing. So it's like it just it needed to line up, especially if it lined up with dead eye. But then that's like magical Christmas land. Like you needed a blue, you needed it to be on top, you needed to have this in hand, like. It's just, it was too inconsistent. It more often than not was just a red one for five. I never was very impressed with it. So power to Teddy. Maybe it never mattered to him. Maybe it was secretly awesome the whole time. <laughs> but, uh, you know, lo and behold, we fast forward and let's see what other Azaleas are top eighting and or winning. A lot of Dromais, you know, a lot of uh, Dorinthias. We're having a very... Very interesting meta right now. This Victor surprises me, to be completely honest with you. But here's uh, Nini. So Nini took a match off of Brody in the Battle Hardened in Swiss and then lost to him in the top eight. But here we go. He's jumping right on the Brody train. You know, this is the just the three blues. He's got the amplifying arrows. Now, he made room for Tar Pit Trap. I think that might have been a Katsu call, if I had to guess. Um, it's honestly, it's nuts into Katsu and into... Uh, Azuri, kind of. You have to like trick them into breaking their shoes and then you play it, but like, eh, it's mostly for Katsu, I, I assume. Um, but he's on the yellow spire sniping, which is like felt great. Like, so many times you'd fire, you'd be forced to fire spire sniping just because it didn't work. And shooting it for six or nine or whatever it may be, or Lord forbid, just three, nightmare. Having the, you know, the four, seven, ten, like, just a little bit better. So, like, these, all these innovations that Brody made. And uh, Nini, you know, had success with it in Atlanta. Um, he said no to the Spell Void, which was smart. There wasn't... Actually, there was a ton of uh, Kano in the Battle Hardened, but not the PTI event. Um, he's only doing the one Endless Arrow, but he did something cool. He's got two Merkmire Grapnels. I don't know if this is Prism tech? Like... <laughs> uh, I guess the Battle Hardened did have a Prism make it all the way to the top four. Did some pretty impressive things on stream, so maybe Nini was just like, I... I, I can bring out the tech. Merkmire Grapnel threaten all those angels and all those shields with one dominated arrow for... It'd probably have to be like for 10 so you can get over soul shield plus a card, but yeah, you could eat every single angel, every single shield, if that's what that's for. I can't really imagine anything other than that for Merkmire Grapnel, but it is a card that does things into certain matchups. And he also is only on two Remorseless, I believe that was just to make room for the tar pit traps, you know. Two less endless arrows to make room for these two grapnels, which at the end of the day are like kind of the same arrows if you don't care about it coming back to hand. But I've just, I've grown to love endless arrow. Endless arrow feels like it's uh, a zero for four arrow that says, uh, if it hits, get a ponder. And your ponder is guaranteed to always be a zero for four arrow. Like... That's nuts. I'd play an arrow that had on hit ponder and you're going to draw something that's pretty okay. Wouldn't you? <laughs> so seeing just one there, it's like, I get it. You probably don't need a ton of endless arrow, but I've really been happy with it. The deck always wants an arsenal and it's just like, as you see, Brody ran three. Here's my deck, Brody style. This is what I ran in Atlanta. I top eight at the PTI event with it. I felt great. I was one turn off from beating Brody. I drew knock, had an arsenal, had a pump. Uh, an arrow and like a yellow so I could load get a draw you know to have a second pump or uh, at the very least you know like an arsenal target knock in the red just go to town like because the azalea mirror is just degenerate it's who finds knock or red and ledger first specifically not because you can dominate it and I found it and I was like booyah got it and then Brody has like a normal turn he hits his snaps and like ah codex or something like that I'm in trouble but it's all right I still got my my knock red, steal the game. And then he plays knock and he goes red. It's like, no, I had you, but then you did the thing first. That's Brody for you, though, man. He's the man.
and he did it one turn faster. Uh, but the, the, the deck feels great. It almost feels like you're cheating. Like Amplifying Arrow, I fired it for 10 with Dominate, which isn't that impressive. But like, you know, a zero for four at yellow is pretty sweet there. That was just two pumps. And then against somebody else, I fired it for 18. And it wasn't dominated, but it was 18 with like a on hit ponder and it hit. Like he gave me the whole hand, uh, had on hit two blood rots. So he blocked 12, took six, two blood rots, uh, took 10. You know, block 12, took 10, and I got a ponder. So I still got an arsenal off of it. Like amplifying arrow has felt great because it's like, it's just good enough in so many situations. And then every once in a while, it's like bananas. It's like, ah, bananas. <laughs> Did you expect bananas? <laughs> and they never expect it. It's always funny, too. You know, it's like, I'm going to shoot this for 14, 18, maybe 22. There's a theoretical ceiling of 24 on it. I'll let you figure that out. Oh, and I, I shot it for, uh, I got a gold off of a victor once because I want to clash. Go figure. And then I cracked the gold to draw a pump, loaded an amplifying arrow, got another pump, and it took like an otherwise bad turn and made it great. Like, not that you should be winning clashes against Victor, but boy, was it fun. <laughs> uh, but no, long story short, I think uh, since there is no ice to really disrupt you, there's Guardian that can disrupt you with their attacks and certain things like that. But she's in a great spot right now. If you're not playing her, I think you should pick her up. Like, she's just very, very good. Um, and if you know more what she's trying to do, then it's going to make you a better fighter against her as well. I mean, it's it's kind of common knowledge. People have been winning. She's a ranger, so she gets access to these just above-rate cards. Where is the super above-rate card? There it is. This one. Play that card. <laughs> see what the chat's saying. Uh, what's the difference between Indian and Imperial? I think Imperial Pale Ale is just like heavier alcohol percentage, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, she's super frustrating to play against Nicholas. Uh, you don't get to play the game when she's doing her version of the game. It's uh, it's rough. Uh, playing the mirror against Brody, like I always joke that if you can like side your red and the ledgers out, the Azalea mirror is like very fair and very fun. But Red and Ledger just turns that game into a like that match into just a degenerate who gets there first, like truly backbreaking because like I don't have armor and like you just can't do anything with one action point with her where like other heroes can do something. But truth be told, like there's nothing more crippling than a seek and destroy or a lace with inertia stapled to a uh, dominated Red and the Ledger. Like you don't get to do anything with your cards. And then you have to ditch them at the end of your turn. It's just, it's a nightmare. I get it. But I'm fully taking advantage of it, and I'm loving every second of it. <laughs> uh, Andrew proved Prism is still viable, but I think with his list, you need stronger pops, like sevens or eights. Yeah, like, I'm looking at some sevens, and I'm just like, eh, maybe you just say screw it, and you just try to beat Prism with big numbers and big damage and debilitating on hits, maybe? Something I got to figure out, but that's a uh, that's certainly something to consider. You th still think it's worth it to run Azalea if ProQuest has Warmongers everywhere? Well, that's something we're going to talk about. Like, can you counter Warmongers? Uh, this current version of the list doesn't counter Warmongers beautifully. You know, if you put an if you're playing against a deck that runs that card, then you probably need to be prioritizing arsenaling arrows um, and or like rain razors stuff like that just so you don't get truly crippled by it um because you know if you go fire an arrow snap your snappies fire an arrow that has like a good on hit be it a sleep dart or red in the ledger whatever it might be that sometimes is good enough to play through a uh, warmonger's turn so it's like it it's almost like it didn't even happen um Lord forbid you put like Bolton shot in Arsenal and you have rain razors and then you can just shoot like, you know, six into seven. And, you know, if the seven is a good on hit, be it sleep dart or whatever it may be, uh, then you just had an outstanding turn. So it's like there's ways to play around it. It's admittedly, you know, what did you Arsenal? What did you draw? Uh, but there's there's precautions you can take. Like, don't ever get caught. If you're playing against Katsu, you know, and he's kept some cards, um, 
and you have the choice to stick an arrow or a non-attack into your arsenal, even though with Azalea, you're always trying to stick those non-attacks and stick in the arrow. Because there's been so many times where I got caught with my pants down. Like, Katsu's having a shmedium turn. You're like, I can take some damage. He can't do the thing. He can't combo from here. And then he throws down Warmongers and, like, just steals your whole turn. And you took, like, you know, five, six, seven, whatever it might be. That's how you lose. That is how you lose to Katsu. <laughs> um, so keep stuff like that in mind. It, it's not just, like... Can is this deck a good choice if there's too much warmongers? It's like, well, yes, it's still a good choice because this deck absolutely beats up on certain things. But uh, are are you able to adjust your play style? Uh, are there certain cards that we can add? Like, I think Enlightened Strike can do a lot. I think Enlightened Strike uh, is a card that I kind of hated in Azalea, but if I know I'm walking into a pro quest that has a lot of people trying to counter my shenanigans, it's like, well, I'll sideboard in some E strikes if if they go warmongers and you go ravenous rabble e-strike for seven like that's probably good enough you can probably manage to win from there still <laughs> um so it just depends i'm i was even toying with the idea of uh upgrading or downgrading i suppose uh, the yellow spire snipings into blue spire snipings and then trying to f uh, find room for like a couple of art of wars that way you could pick like go again and uh plus one but um, that just seems a little silly. <laughs> like I don't think I don't think the deck has room for Art of War, uh, especially if you get caught on like an all red hand or a hand that has a bunch of not attacks. Hang on, give me just one second, stream. I will be right back. Uh, sorry about that. I was uh, blocking somebody in, so I had to move my car. Uh, where was I, chat? Um, da -da 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 -da. Do people play judge, jury, executioner? Some people do. Uh, the person who won the Battle Hardened in Phuket was on it. Uh, we were looking at that list. Uh, well, this, this isn't that list, actually. Um, where is that list? Brody won the Calling, and then the Battle Hardened was won by Teddy Tai. Teddy Tay? Somebody tell me how to pronounce that. Uh, he was on a Judge Jerry Executioner. And again, 
There's been two times, once against the victor, and uh, I forget the other time, but I revealed it once off a of ravenous rabble, and it was amazing. You know, so of course I went and got it, and I dominated it, and I put the aim counter on it, and I fired it. But I had a uh, either a blue, I think I had a blue in that hand, because I had loaded Death Dealer, you know? So it's like, I had a blue in that hand, you know? Like, that's the only thing that let that line up. If I hadn't had a blue, then I can't afford the aim counter and be able to fire it. It's like, you know, um, so it's just too many things, you know, like it's, it, it's really good when it's really good. And that's, and that one time I'm talking about, it was great. It was amazing. You know, the victor suddenly had to respect my turn and like bend over backwards, to try and stop as much of it as he could have, because, you know, it's going to cost him basically his whole hand if it hits. Um, but if I hadn't had a blue, I wouldn't have been able to put an aim counter on it. If, uh, if I hadn't had Ravenous Rabble, then I don't know what's on top of the deck. And against Victor, you can't really blind Azalea, like, unless you know for sure it's an arrow, because you can't just do nothing with your turn. Eh, sometimes you can, because, like, you shouldn't really be firing at him unless it's dominated, depending on what you're firing. Like, Fatigue Shot for 8 or Drill Shot for 7 is always good enough, because they kind of have to respect those two things, but... I don't know. <clears throat> it's just too many things have to line up. It's like magical Christmas land to make judge jury executioner work. And when it doesn't work, which is so, so often, like we're not running uh memorial ground. If you have to block with it early, you know, if you have it early and like your options are block with it or like hold it to pitch weird. It's like, no, just block with it. And now it's done nothing. You're not going to go grab it off a of codex. Are you <sighs> not really? You don't want to at least. <laughs> Um, so it's just, it's not, it's not reliable enough. It's really hard to pull off when it does line up, unless you have very specific things, you know, happening. Um, it's just not good enough. It's too clunky. Like it's hard to pull it off. It rarely ever is pulled off. And I'd much rather just have an arrow that does the thing like fatigue shot is always going to say fatigue shot on hit sleep dart is always going to say sleep dart on hit. Like, I don't need some arrow that isn't doing diddly squat, you know? And you also, you notice, he's, you know what arrow he's not running, which is an arrow that I've just fallen in love with. Where's the other Azalea list? Nini was on it. Amplifying arrow. Amplifying arrow is the majestic arrow you need, and you get to run three of them. It isn't just a silly one of. <laughs> this arrow, man, sometimes it's a zero for five. Would you run a zero for five at yellow if you could? Would you run a zero for four at yellow if you could? And Lord forbid it's ever a zero for six. That's better than Lava Burst. You would run that. <laughs> anyway, sorry. I don't, I don't care for Judge Jury Executioner. I think the card looks good. I think the card looks good. <laughs> uh, thank you, Jason. You're the best. You started using Trench. I can get on, I can get on board in, with Trench. Although Tunic, sometimes that one money off a of Tunic is just insane. But Trench can do some cool things. It can save you from Warmongers, actually. Yeah, that's a great point. Hmm. Uh, yeah, there's two events this weekend. Yeah, Art of I think Art of War is too cute. Like if you don't have like an arrow or if you only have one arrow in the hand that you draw it, it's like, you can't risk drawing two pumps off of it and then having nothing to fire. Uh, it, it does bail you out if you have a fistful of arrows, but then that hopefully isn't happening anyways. She doesn't really want to pitch like that. We're kind of on just the three blues right now, unless people want to evolve and adapt, but I've been extremely happy with Brody's list. I don't think there's much I would change about it at all. Uh, except for down and dirty, which I guess is something we can talk about right now. Um, so, uh, I, I honestly think, uh, Brody just knocked it out of the park. Uh, I've had more fun and success with Azalea on, and I was having a good time and having some success with her with like the more traditional list, you know, eight or nine blues, uh, really just that eight or nine blues, all the Bolton shots, you know, just very traditional. Um, but this just feels better. The deck plays like a dream. It does everything you want it to. It, uh, it plays well off of small hands. You know, if you ever have, 
a two card hand that's like a zero cost arrow a pomp you need to have tunic for this admittedly but uh you can load off a tunic uh if you draw another pomp if it's pre-med or if the arrow's endless arrow then you can fire for 10 that has a pretty gnarly on hit hopefully get you back on an arsenal so lord forbid you fire it for 13 or something like that because you kept four cards or three cards i mean to say and you draw it off a of death dealer just death dealer lets you be more flexible with smaller hands because it's like you're always gonna not always but you can typically cheat in an extra card and it just it you don't want to be blocking but on the on the hands where you kind of have to it's like the deck still does things because it's just so nothing costs anything you know aside from your one cost arrows it's like you don't have to work very hard to get all this value out on the field and if you staple dominate to it it's just a dream come true but yeah so looking at the list it's like down and dirty is the best popper for azalea so if we want to keep poppers for prism then you know it's probably what we're running unless you want to run like find Elf's fighting spirit which is like you're never going to get to throw it with the decks on three blues you know um but it is a seven and it does have some text on it uh so you can gain life and pop against prism pop semi-reliably as well because it's a seven so if you do want to run a popper, it's like, isn't it just Findel's Fighting Spirit? Or is it just down and dirty and you say, like, hey, I'm I'm really vulnerable to Herald of Triumph and your Halo. Like, I'm going to try and force your Halo with my first down and dirty pop, basically. <laughs> um, and I don't know. I Again, there's some testing to do. There's some figuring out to be done. But, like, I'm almost like, screw it. We'll just say lose the poppers and just maybe have a tech card that's good into Prism. I guess it could be Merkmeyer Grapnel, but I'm almost, almost willing to just. Uh, is that good enough? Is Merkmeyer Grapnel good enough? What do you think, chat? What do we do for Prism? Do we just like don't respect her and try to beat her with big dominate? If you throw enough big dominate at her, it might be good enough. Well, at the same time, though, I could see it just being rough as well. Ooh, what up, Tay Minja? Well, let's look. We've got Battering Bolt as a replacement popper, but I wouldn't I wouldn't swap out down and dirty. Down and dirty is the popper that I want. But I think we're going to try to just cut it. And we're going to replace it with something else. So that card is Draw My Hate. If we're trying to figure out Illusionist Hate, then my my brain goes to Merkmire Grapnel. It's just not very flashy, not very exciting. Oh, wait. This is Prism Hate. This will stop a whole Herald. Because her stuff's going to have go again. And it's even, it's a little bit of hate in the Katsu too. <laughs> Was it really that easy? Is it just Tar Pit Trap? <laughs> I think it's that easy. Um, it'll stop the Heralds from procking. Lord forbid, you know, she, if she only throws one on a turn, maybe I force her to block with a really rough arrow. Um, and this is good enough to stop that whole thing, unless she pitches a blue to it, but she shouldn't typically be doing that. <laughs> um, I think this could be the right choice. Uh, and it's, you know, it's good in the Katsu as well. Um, hmm. Okay. You could even bring it in against Kano to up our yellow count, actually. All right. Is that, is that, is that it? Job's done. <laughs> Let me look. Uh, Ravenous Rabble was also for Dromai. Like, I've, I've, I've been kind of low on Ravenous Rabble. This should actually be in the sideboard, and Drill Shot should be uh, moved up. Where is Drill Shot? There it is. Um... So yeah, Ravenous Rabble was kind of just for Dromai. What else did it come in against, though? It came in in certain matchups, but honestly, the deck plays so well these days, it's almost like you don't even need Ravenous Rabble. It's good when it's good. 
I don't know what I could replace it with, though, to be honest with you. Hmm. We'll keep it in for now. Because I'm not sure what I would drop for it. Like, maybe Merkmire Grapnel, again. That could be something that we should look into. But I don't necessarily want to make room for that card yet. Like, maybe a one-of. We could drop an Endless and just have a one-of Merkmire so I can grab it off a of knock. Eh, fine. Let's do that. That way I just, I have a, a knock target if things are going bad against Prism and it's like, it's my only good option is grab this off a of knock. I think that's fine. All right. Sure. I think, uh, I think that is worthy of taking for a spin. Let's go ahead and get a match going. We logged in? Yes, we are. Sweet. We could fight a Bolton. I'll just let a match come to me. Oh, what's up, France? Oh my gosh, the chat had a lot of things happen while I wasn't looking. Uh, I'll 1v1 me, 1v1 you if you get in here. Not playing Kano. And I disrespect Prism. That's fine. How, is, is Down and Dirty really respecting her that much? Prism is hella fake. Uh-huh, Jason. Yeah, hella fake. <laughs> Uh, Minja, you agree with losing the poppers? Nine times make it hard. You're adding Merkmar, but I won the other day without him. Oh, what's up, Skylar? Um, yeah, I could see, uh... Oh, we got somebody who joined us. Oh, gosh, it's a Kano. Uh, okay, well, let's equip the Kano stuff. We'll hit him with a hello. Um... Well, we're going to put in the tar pits because they're yellow. What do I usually run here? Not Lace with Frailty, Sleep Dart. And I think Remorseless. Oh, and Release Attention isn't going to matter, so we can do Take Aim instead. Unless this is one of those pitch stack ones. But if it's a pitch stack one, then so be it. Uh, but yeah, I I almost wonder if you need, even need Merkmire. It's like Merkmire can be like a Hail Mary if they've just gotten weight. Look at that. What a good start. Um, he's running Stir. Interesting. Uh, if they get a great start, you know, and they resolve a bunch of shields and a bunch of angels, then you can knock and send like a big dominated Merkmire and hopefully clear the board. But outside of that specific scenario, it's like you might have already lost at that point, maybe. Um, oh, geez, he didn't let me make this hand any better. See if we can't draw a pump and find a dominate. Well, I guess we can always find a dominate, but um, <laughs> okay. Well, we can't draw a pump to save our life, but we get to keep the blue here, which is kind of nice. Uh, we will pay because we want to filter some cards. I don't want this many reds, and I don't want this many arrows. This still has Dominate, so if he tries to do multiple things next turn, he's going to eat a fair amount of damage. He's probably just throwing a big old spell at me, though, which is annoying. Um, but yeah, like I got to think against Prism. If you're just doing the thing, um, you know, having the big damage turns like you want to have them. Ooh, we definitely want to dominate this, except our way to dominate is sitting right there. Hopefully we can find another arrow. Um, it's like she's bad at blocking. So if you send huge arrows, that should do the trick. If you send huge dominated arrows, then that should do the trick too. It's like, oh, my Atlantis. Um, oh, this is going to make the next thing he does huge. Gross. Uh, do, I, do I need to respect this? I kind of wanted to fire a dominated something. Uh, I can still try. We'll just mitigate some, do some damage control. Well, at least it's during his main phase. It's still coming in for freaking nine, though. Ugh, what a nightmare. Um, do we stop two? We'll just stop one. I'm already on to 27. I might have already lost. <laughs> Him getting that turn zero plus three. 
pretty good. And having a good thing to put it on as well. That'll do. We could have pitched more, but I didn't want him to know that I was potentially running on fumes. Alright, so we get to staple inertia to this. I like that a lot. If he lets us, we might snap it and shoot it again. And by let's, I mean he, if he doesn't kill us <laughs> with my whole two pitch. Uh, I guess I've got AB3 though, if he does go for like a wildfire play. Anyway, so back to chat. Uh, tar Pit would be good. I think so too, Mackenzie. I really do. Um, ignore that woman. Oh, Prism. Yeah. Uh, tar Pit feels great in a Prism. I agree. What's up, France? Good to see you, dude. Um, you keeping Rabbles in? I'm keeping him in for now, Brad, but I'm very much uh, considering... Oh, he's doing things. Might need to turn this on. Yep, he's going for it. Breaking your hat, too. What, are you going to double wildfire me or something insane? I'm just Azalea, bro. You don't got to do all that. <laughs> oh, this is not good. Although, how many canos does he have floating? If he can't do blazing at the end of this... Oh, is he just trying to get my... Hmm... What does he have sitting over here? Oh, are these both playable? Oh, okay. Uh, in that case, yeah, I think we do cash it in. Uh, this is going to stick him with an inertia. Of course, it's flare, so it's going to be multipli multiplicative. I believe that's how you say that. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm probably... Oh, God, seven. See, I probably still just lose here, even though he's already popped off. Can Perhaps a smidge too soon. I think we do just go ahead and fire it again. Although, ah, crap. I have to crack bullseyes for that. I maybe shouldn't have done this. It's okay, though. It is what it is. I don't care the order, bro. Oh, okay. Wish I had one more money. Probably not worth it, but if I can get him down to 11, you know, he's he's going to pass for his whole turn. Maybe he draws a bunch of reds, and then we can just kill him. Probably not worth it to drop your AB2. That's a, that's a good learning thing against Kano as Azalea. Like, don't break this. Just don't. Unless it's winning you the game, don't do it. Like, I probably shouldn't have done it there, admittedly. Well, we can send... A fairly large dominated red. It's not exactly what I want right now, though. Yeah, bottom that. I kind of want to find a pump, actually. That'll do. That'll do. Will it? Yeah, that'll do because we can send multiple things, and that's pretty scary. All right, so fire Bolton shot. It's got go again, but we're going to rain razor it. And then we're going to fire something else. Yes. Um, Death dealer. Codex. This is probably where he goes for it. Yeah, let's see what he has. I maybe shouldn't even have pitched for Death Dealer there. Maybe should have just settled with Fire and a zero for four. We will see. That's all right, though. Sometimes Kano just does the thing. And I might have been a little sloppy here. Probably. <laughs> oh no, book. I needed you to draw all reds, bro. Not all blues. 
<laughs> oh, no. Well, he saw my book and raised me a book. I think you try to race Prism. You have to run Merkmeyer, otherwise she just floats aboard. Yeah, you're probably right, Mackenzie. I could see that. <laughs> Boom, job done. Oh, that's on me to pass. Sorry, guys. Just reading the chat. Uh, it's so just not. I'm dead. I get it. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, we got to go grab Bolton shot. Oh, what, are you just going to block because you drew a bunch of reds or something? Crap. <laughs> that's not good. That's why I needed the one floating. <laughs> I needed him to not be able to block. That's not good for me. <laughs> Maybe should have done this turn differently. Yeah, in fact, it's probably better to just load the amplifying arrow off of Codex, and if I draw a pump, then it's just insane. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, him buying himself a turn here is pretty rough. I'm probably boned. I'm probably boned. Spindle, get out of here. Uh, yeah, I'll do it like that. Yeah, I've lost. That's okay, though. That's okay. It does let you see this uh, top of your deck. I was talking about Ravenous Rabble. Yeah, that's kind of what makes me keep it. Go ahead and kill me, bud. Go ahead and kill me. Gone. Do it now. Kill me. It's fine. Um, e strikes over rabbles. Uh, I considered e strike. I'm not the biggest fan of e strike. First game, Kano checks out. Yeah, that's right. Oh, he hit an e-pot off the top. That helps us. Oh, wait. Did we just win because there was an e-pot on top? Ha! Well, good game. Sometimes you can just beat Kano because there's a potion on top. That's pretty rough. <laughs> Poor guy. All right. Um, well, that, you know. Hey, there's a dub. That was, uh, that was kind of a weak sauce dub, though. We're still going to add it to the, uh, <coughs> the win-loss counter. <laughs> but uh that very easily could have gone the other way there i think there was some uh less than stellar choices that i made but hey you know i'll take it against kano he hit something off the top that didn't give him what he needed and it gave me exactly what i needed you guys want to watch me beat up on a a max let's just fight a dio how about that oh never mind somebody else got it let me fight KO. Yeah, let's fight a KO. Why not? That sounds like fun. Never mind. I'll just make my own lobby. <laughs> um, but yeah, E-Strike is a consideration. I don't know. I'm not crazy about that card. And Azalea. It, it's fine. It, it's something worth testing as well. Because it does play nicely into uh, Warmongers. But like, it was also good in the Dromai, and I stopped running it there. So it just depends. Uh, call me crazy, I took out Ravenous Rabble for Scout the Periphery, just to push more damage on my arrows for on hits. That's kind of, that makes sense. Um, Ravenous Rabble, Aviserai, cool. This should be uh, great for me. Um, I don't want him setting up, so I'm going to go first. Uh, we'll just treat it like it's uh, Azuri. I don't know. I don't think I have a button for Viserai. Hello. Oh, it's... What up, Damien? <laughs> or Justin. What up, Justin? Hi, Justin. Um, I lost to uh, Aaron Grace. I think his name's Aaron Grace. Forgive me if I'm getting your last name wrong, Aaron. But uh, I lost to Viserai in the PTA event on my way to top eight in Swiss just because my deck just rebelled against me and drew... Worse than I've ever seen it draw. It was crazy. So bad. Oh, you know what? This has text, doesn't it? Huh. 
think I'm going to run it. Sure, why not? Let's see what happens. Um, okay, well, let's see if we can pull off a dominate. We don't have any of our nifty little tools, but we can always blind Azalea. Oh, baby. <laughs> That's a great way to start. That is a great way to start. And uh, if you ever go first, I feel like you go for that every time. Always go for the kickflip. That's what uh, I learned from people in the Azalea community. When you go for a blind Azalea and you land it, we call it a kickflip. <laughs> if you don't land it, it's called uh, landing flat on your face and skinning your knee. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, that's a kickflip. I think it's always right to go for the kickflip on turn zero. I really do. It's just... Because, you know, you, you, I don't even think you should be firing on turn zero if it's not dominated, you know? Like, there's maybe Phi if you can pump it to the moon. But then he'll just, like, give you armor, and then you might not get an arsenal. It's just... Unless it's dominated, I don't think you fire on turn zero, plain and simple. Give me a pump. One time for a pump. Okay, amplifying arrow. Well, you know what? That's our pitch card for next turn. We're going to hopefully bottom this to find a pump. Sonata. This is going to be his one turn. Or is one uh, one thing? I guess if he dumps into it, he can uh, yeah, he can like try to chunk a bunch of arcane damage at me. That makes sense. He's paying six, is it? So that means he's going to reveal eight cards, I think. No, just six cards, isn't it? Oh no, it would have been three plus three. Okay, yeah, duh. I'm... I thought it was two, and then I thought wrong. Uh, I'll. Uh, I'll take it. I could have pitched away the red, but that's either my arsenal target or that's what I'm loading. So either way, I want it. Oh, yeah. Sierra Nevada's hazy little thing. Grabbed that while I was moving the car earlier. Did a little two birds, one stone action. And now we will send a red in the ledger the size of the sun. Hope you didn't arsenal a D react. Because you're not going to get to use it right now. Uh, that's our arsenal, so that's fine. We'll just leave that on top because we're about to draw it. Some Azalea players would be tempted to throw this on there. If it was premeditate, I would have. Because then, you know, you get the arsenal back. But I need an arsenal for next turn, so we kind of need to keep that card. Uh, but so far, so good. Arknight Shard. Good thing to do with his one action. Oh, and it turns it on, too, because he made an aura. That's hilarious. This is a good little interaction. That's a three for, three for eight right there. Or no, a two for eight. Hmm. Imagine if you were able to get going again somehow. Wait, what? Did this not turn on? Oh, he's got a frailty. It was from Arsenal. Woof. Well. Ooh, Tunic's coming up. Okay, so we can either send a huge Endless Arrow or send a huge Bolton Shot threatening to reload Endless Arrow. Oh, we're getting two premeditates now, so yeah, that's exactly what we do. We're saying no blocks. Alrighty, because we can fire two things this turn. Let's see what's on top. Give me another pump. Ooh, a sleep dart. No, we don't want that right now. Right now, we're just trying to throw big numby. We've gotten him low enough that if I just throw like crazy big numbers, it's not going to matter what he does. Uh, yeah, lead with Bolton shots. Oh, Rain Razors. That's so good. <laughs> uh, yeah, it doesn't even matter. I was going to say we could save one for the Endless Arrow, but as long as we land any ponder, this Endless Arrow is just damaged at this point. And look at that. He blocked by exactly 13. Now we get to say, haha, it didn't matter. Oh, wow. We can actually do the thing if he lets me. Let's see if he lets me. Because it's uh, Endless Arrow, we can pretend we're Lexi and fire it again off of uh, snaps if it hits again. And since he has no cards in hand, I think this is hitting. Yeah, we'll snap it. So what was that? Uh, like 15 into 6, now into 7? 
uh, a 28 damage turn, I believe it is. And you guys just, and you guys are considering not playing Azalea? <laughs> oh my goodness. I just pretended I was Lexi for a turn. And it was awesome. Didn't even need a three of a kind. Because I draw my cards separately. It's a three of a kind, see? Drew a card here, draw a card here, draw a card here. Rain raises three of a kind turn. <laughs> oh my goodness, and really good targets too. I always do, eh, it's not going to matter here, but I've learned always arsenal the pump if you have more than one that you're more willing to bottom. Like, if I needed to try and dominate here, I'd rather have the lace with blood rot in my hand than being the thing that I bottom. Uh, but we're not bottoming here, so it doesn't matter. Um, we should just pitch that so we have a better arsenal target. A Bolton shot. That's our arsenal target now. Huh, do we... We don't Azalea because if it whiffs, then we're just doing nothing. So, yeah. Sorry if I missed y'all's chat. Let me see what all's going on here. Okay, so he's going to drop to one. Uh, which is kind of risky because of the blood rot. I also could have had one of my reins, but that's all right. Huh, look at that. And actually came together after all. All right. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, scout the periphery. Uh, but yeah, I, I was talking about that earlier before I got distracted. Uh, I can agree with that. I think... Uh, Ravenous Rabble has kind of gone down because this version of the deck is just so uh, consistent. I mean, it, it can be inconsistent. I've had it happen before, but the deck is fairly consistent as far as Azalea goes. Um, and uh, it's like Ravenous Rabble almost doesn't feel necessary. It's like you'd rather just have a pump that is actually going onto your arrow, much like Dylan said here. But Ravenous Rabble still does some pretty cute stuff, and Scout the Periphery is like... It just doesn't feel necessary. And like sometimes Ravenous Rabble in like a late game scenario where the match has gotten kind of scrappy is just like that extra thing that's a break point that demands an extra card and like will strip their hand or be how you kill them in the late game when you're like having to be a little scrappy and maybe there's some wiggle room for them to get back into the match where like Scout the Periphery can't do that. Um, and again, Ravenous Rabble is playable against Warmongers. So there's just certain things that kind of hold it out for me. It's not... Outstanding, though. You're absolutely right about that. Uh, I think it's just going to be Seek Fire, Load, Seek Fire. Yep, yep. So we're just eating all this damage. We have so much health that we can afford to do it. If he doesn't keep a blue for this Blood Rot, he's going to die that way. So it's like, oh, he's breaking his chest. So he's keeping a blue, I would imagine. Rattlebones. What, are you trying to finish me here? I don't think it's going to work, bro, but good luck. I hope that last card's blue. Otherwise, you're going out in a big, spectacular display of purple fireworks that I just do not care about. Um, dominate Red Atom. Breaking Stormies already. A win is a win, that's right. <laughs> not the most... Uh, Impressive win on my part. I feel like it kind of fell in my lap, but I'll take it. Uh, sorry to all the Max players in the world. Uh, Max has felt incredibly free for Azalea ever since I started playing it. Like, Max has just felt unfair. It's like he doesn't stand a chance. It's, it's what it feels like, at least. <laughs> uh, that'll do. And now we can try to find a Dominate. I mean, is it one? I'm really not too worried about it. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Can I share the list? Oh, it, it's literally just Brody's list. Uh, oh, I mean, I, I guess I swapped out Down and Dirty with Tar Pit Trap, and I made room for a single Merkmire Grapnel that is yet to matter or come up in any form. <laughs> but it, I did make that change. <laughs> and I continue to just be thoroughly pleased with the uh, Endless Arrow. Uh, it's fine. I'm... Um, I'm just shooting this for 10 and killing him, I think. Uh, hey, only be able to block for five. What 
dumb card is this? You've played a creator Nora, this gets a rematch? Uh, sure. Oh, it's, uh, it's Consuming Volition. Okay, uh, great arsenal target here. We did not get any pumps. Let's see if we can find one. Uh, pitching. I do kind of want to get this armor out of the way, but I'm just going to pitch away the drill shot. Loading in that. Knock. That is not really what I'm looking for, to be completely honest. We could go find something and demand a piece of armor early. I guess that's fine. Let's demand a piece of armor early. Um, it's probably red. Yeah, it's probably red. Now, this is a pretty weak start. We're down a knock, but we've taken out some armor. That's really the only silver lining to this one. Well, now we're getting Arsenal Bolton shot. That's actually pretty sweet, but. Okay, okay, we got the yellow, we got two pumps. This is pretty good, actually. I can live with this. Mauverin Skies, and it's red. Great. So we, we should be blocking, but I am going to just have to eat this. This freaking two for ten it's going to be. Oh, my lord. What a nightmare. I should block this. And just try to find a better dominate target off the top of the deck. Yeah, I should probably block this. Oh, son of a gun. Um, it's just so much value. It's on hit three more. So whatever I block with is like it's blocking for an additional three. Block with these arrows. It's like I'm blocking for seven off of them. I give up tunic, but that seems insane. And then I... If I give up one of these cards, the other card is just infinitely weaker. Ah, eh, screw it. Azalea doesn't want to block. Let's see what happens when I truly don't block. This is a nightmare. I'm about to take 10 and probably a sword swing too. Oh, never mind. He's just stacking. Well, considering he didn't swing sword, I feel a little better about that. Uh, anyway, so let's have my turn. Um... Reveal Bolton shots. I want to pump on top, to be honest, so we're going to bottom that. Uh, let's start with... <sighs> Excuse me. Start with uh, Release Attention. Because even though Lace with Frailty isn't the most amazing on hits, I do want that. Well, I maybe should have led with the Lace with Frailty, as it turns out. Uh, that's all right. Hmm. How about that, sir? Are you okay with uh, taking that kind of damage? Oh, man. Well, now I wish this were Sleep Dart or Red in the Ledger. He's about to have quite a turn, I can tell. But he's taking a lot of damage to do it. That's a great arsenal target. Okay, he played Become, discarding Spellblade. Probably going to go get a Revel, if I had to guess. Anyways, back to chat. i uh, love to see it. What's up, Lee? Uh, running D to T, D, D T D, Dusk Till Dawn? Or is that supposed to be Down and Dirty? Uh, I, I swapped over uh, to Tarpit Trap. What did he go? He got Mordred? Okay. Uh, I think Tar Pit Trap is just a little better. Um, Mavrian Skies. Oh my god, look at all those chants. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's nine. I'm going to go down to 26, and it's four more. Okay, I can live with this. Uh, 13 into probably a sword swing, if I had to guess. Oh, probably revel into sword swing, which is actually, like, a lot. Um, we might lose here, but we'll see. I'm glad it's just a blue one. If it were a red mob, that would be terrifying. 
Oh, it's swarming. Okay. Um, is that better or worse for me than Revel? I guess he keep, gets to keep the chance at the end of the turn, so that's a little bit worse. But is it the same amount of damage effectively? I think it is. Or no, is Revel a smidge more because of Mordred? I think it's the same. I think it's the same amount of damage. Or no, Revel might be like one more. Yeah. And this is two and four, so I'm dropping a nine. But yeah, that's fine. I can't prevent any of it anyway, so why would I try? This would be the... Oh, God, he's got a frailty. Ooh. So whatever I block with is blocking for five. I think I have to. I think I have to. Yeah, I wanted to keep all my arrows, but that's that blocks for five if I do that. That's too good. He won't have any chance going to the next turn. Yeah, that's super good. That's super good. Um, all right, Skullbone. There's a pre-med on top. So top it. Play out this. Um, tunic, death dealer in Bolton shot. Yeah, because we can send a sizable Bolton shot and a sizable amplifying arrow here. Yeah, I think this is probably pretty worth it. Yeah, because it's gonna be four, seven, eleven. Ooh, that's pretty good actually. <laughs> And like, here's another cute example of Amplifying Arrow doing cool stuff. Like, ah, oh, look at that. And he actually respected it too. That's so good. Well, sir, I have bullseye bracers. Oh, I forgot to... He blocked for nine, right? I think he blocked for nine. So we, we didn't have a reason to play it. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, Pre-med. And Amplifying. Now we will use Rain Razors, I do believe. Because it gives it plus three. Him on a one card hand, I'm not too scared of. Especially considering I'm getting two looks at an arsenal. <laughs> oh, and they're both the same card. And they're both really good at this state of the game. All right, he's going for another setup. I respect it. Uh, is it just send huge endless arrow? I think it is, as a matter of fact. Unless we can find a better target on top. Uh, 16, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty forced to block that. Or at least a fair amount of it. All right, what do you got? Ah, I've seen this play before from you. <laughs> this time it really is for seven. Oh, you're so, so screwed. Yeah, I'll take it. We'll go to six. Hope you don't creepers and throw six arcane at me with uh, Sonata. Oh, I don't even need all this. I could literally dominate, like, anything. But it's fine. Um, oh, let's do an amplifying arrow. That'll be fun. Nope. Pump. 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 Fire. 14 dominate. <laughs> Look at that zero for five. Pretty good. <laughs> All right. Oh, he's going to try and creep or something in. You got your uh, Sonata? Oh, it's Book. <laughs> well, that's cool. <laughs> Let's see if you hit. You did not hit. <laughs> There's the card that maybe could have killed me if you had pitched just a crazy amount of cards into it. Eh, I don't even know how many. I think maybe just... No, I think you would need to pitch like 12 or 8 at the very least. 
something like that. Um, 17.5 threatened per turn. Pretty good. <laughs> All right, uh, let's, uh, let's make adjustments to the win-loss because we're doing pretty good. We went from 1-0 to 3-0. Not too shabby, if I do say so myself. All right, uh, we'll just hop into another match. But I do want to check the chat. I feel like I'm being a little bad about it. Oop. Okay. Uh, nice draws. This turn go crazy. I assume that was the 28 damage turn I had. It's so fun when you can pretend to be Lexi for a turn here and there. It's not too hard to pull off. Well, it, it's really just you have to save your equipment for stuff like that. That's when you're breaking snaps or bullseyes. Not exclusively, because I've learned a lot of the matches that I lose as Azalea, I'll look and I still have my snaps or I still have my bullseyes sitting on the board. And it's like, don't be looking for the perfect turn to get them off. Sometimes you're behind and you just need to use them as soon as they're like worth it enough. Like I've cracked bullseyes before if I'm like slightly behind on a match because it's like, this is good enough. I have to. This will get me back in the match where it's like you really do want to save it from when it's amazing but sometimes it's just like you got to just make it good enough um kasai i keep my double high octane mech otk but i respect your 28. <laughs> what up t um let me get the sideboard ready for this match so it's warrior i Generally speaking, hedge to a uh, uh, tar pit trap. I kind of I go I go a little fat into warrior. Um, this is probably a little too fat. I don't think remorseless is necessary. Ah, screw it. We'll keep it in. Sleep dart. We'll run it like that. Sixty six. I don't want to be too fat. Okay, then. Uh, well, this is a great arsenal target. We're just looking for a turn zero dominate anyways. Oh, there's another amplifying arrow. Nope. Um, well, yeah. It bites, but you just got to play out the, uh, the pump because it's face up. Replace it and move on. This is a oh blood on our hands. This is a relatively tough matchup. Um, I don't care to block this because she's probably going to have a go against Source anyways. Oh, just damage. Okay, <laughs> not what I was expecting, admittedly. Maybe she didn't draw a go again. There's an end the swing, going to the bottom. Good to know. Note to self. Let's see what's on top. Give me a pump. Um, that's close, but no, we kind of need a pump. So play out a lace. Pitch. We're going to save the Bolton shot for Arsenal. Darn it. Well, I guess we can, we can find a dominate. Yeah, I'd rather have the dom. And we can pump it a little bit, too, by pitching away the Remorseless. Yeah, this is fine. It's going to get a frailty through and hopefully a Blood Rod unless they want to cash in. Oh, unless they want to cash in their armor. Oh, she's got a Shunt or something in Arsenal. Or is that all you got? What do you got, two of them? Or like a Sink Blow in hand? Oh, we had two of them. Wow. <laughs> okay. That's, you know, again, though, we got some armor out of the way. Um, I'm, I'm fine with that. That is, that is perfectly fine. This is something that you typically should be blocking. Ooh, Rain Razors. Uh, but we have a Rain Razors turn. And I'm coming up on Tunic 3, so we will not be blocking. <laughs> now we're just going to eat all this damage. And they're going to get their coppers, and we're just going to hope that they never really get to utilize them. That is the short of it. But we're about to send some pretty annoying stuff. 
Hopefully this isn't okay. Um, I was gonna say hopefully that's not C and C. <laughs> oh man, he's just stroking everything. My man be stroking. All right, what do we got? Give me a pump. Uh, that'll do. That'll do. All right, so fire it off naked because we're just gonna rain it. Oh, wait. Well, it's still a good arsenal target. Ooh, a hold the line. Uh, I guess it's just infecting shot. Yeah, that's good enough, though. We'll pass on that interaction. Here's a big dumb arrow with a lot of on hits attached to it. What do you think about that, my friend? Ooh, I'll take those cards. You weren't going to get to keep them anyways. That's a great arsenal target. We saw it on top, so we knew it was there. Hmm. Huh, so this one's a little funny. Um, I want to get off this Bolton shot. Okay, we don't want that, so we're going to bottom that. Um, I want to get off this Bolton shot, but it's probably just what we're going to pitch for drill shot here, so we can send something huge. Yeah, I think that's the case, because I want to have the option to play rain or arsenal it. So yeah, that's the case. Oh, there's another Bolton shot. Well, that might be our arsenal target now. Okay, now fire it. Uh, just for 10, but it is threatening a frailty. We can always rain razor it as well. Um, we're probably going to if it lets us snipe some armor. Oh, we can actually just steal grains. That might be worth it. Hmm. Oh, he might have had two reactions. Nice. Oh! We're getting all the reactions. You know, really, that's that's kind of fine. Because we've still got a great ar arsenal target. He's not doing squat with his turn. And I bet you he doesn't have a reaction to stick an arse, which is where we want him to be. Alright, we can live with that. Two pumps. Annoyed that that's not an arrow. There's rain. Um, let's try to send a big amplifying arrow. What would that be? 10, 13? That's not exactly good enough. Mm, leave that on top. We're going to go lace with inertia. Fire this off for six. Anyways, back to the chat. <laughs> Josh, I, uh, Prism is very tempting right now, as well as good, but uh, she's just not exactly the Prism that I used to love, so it feels a little strange to play her these days, as silly as that is to say. Um, but I am going to be taking her for a spin and trying to figure her out. Give me a better arrow on top of the deck. That's not exactly what I want. Um, I guess I can dominate it, yeah. And then just arsenal the rain. Sure. It's the same amount of damage as Amplifying Arrow is currently, and it's uh, going to be dominated. So that's just a smidge better. Very lackluster turn here, though, unfortunately. A very lackluster turn. 
Getting the armor out of the way, though, I still have a decent amount of health. Aside from the four copper, I feel pretty good. Don't love the copper, admittedly. Oh, that's cool. He had to respect it because he thought I might load on another arrow. Huh, <laughs> sweet. That was always on the table, but I was never going to do it. All right, now this has potential. Ooh. You can have your five-card hand because I'm going to try and dominate you. I'll take it. Now, this is scary. They could draw, like, a really good hand with the coppers and the gold. This could be bad. All right, let's see. Seek and destroy. That's fine. I just need an arrow to be one of the two cards underneath that seek and destroy. No, really? 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 Oh, come on. I am just furious with Tar Pit Trap. <laughs> Oh, man. When Spire Sniping doesn't find an arrow on top, it feels like the most worthless card. <laughs> oh, what a pain. Okay, then. Um, I guess we're just sending a big Spire Sniping, yeah. Big Spire Sniping. No reason to stick that onto it. Leave that on top. I mean, it's big enough and he's low enough on armor that this should be annoying, even with his five card hand, but this should have been like a cool dominate. Oh, man. I think this had the potential to be pretty big. It had the potential, whatever, it doesn't matter. This is still 15. It's still nice. I just hate when Spire Sniping lets me down. It always feels like such a bummer. Look at that. Almost blocking with his whole hand, still taking some damage. Unless this is a Vapor Scene. That's fine, though. This is a reset. I'm going to be off of an arsenal, so it kind of bites for me, but... Could be worse. Could be worse. Yeah, even this hand is pretty functional. Boop. And boop. And boop. Good old fashioned endless arrow for 10. Commanding performance. Wow, wow, wow. Incoming sink below, I presume? There it is. Sinking a card? He did sink a card. Uh, so we could snap and then bullseye in infecting shot. It would land. So that's kind of like trading this in for four value. Is that worth it? No, he's not doing any, anything on his turn. Let's just have the arsenal. It's tempting because it would hit, but I don't think it's worth it. Uh, oh, threatening to make gold? Are you going to pitch away your only card? Wow. I feel like you should have just arsenaled that. I kind of don't even care if you make the gold. Oh, you know what, though? I can give up one of these cards. I have too many cards in this hand. Um... Hmm. I guess if we can stop him from making gold, we should stop him from making gold. Um... What am I doing with my turn? Yeah, something like that. I don't know, it's, it's that situation where I don't want to block, but I've got too many arrows in my hand. Oh yeah, tar pit trap. Unhappy every time I see it. Oh, he, we're running a little bit light on cards. Azalea, Red and the Ledger will do. Uh, sure. 
Nah. All right, take aim. He doesn't have a D-reactant arsenal, so he can't do anything about this. So we are going to say you only get to do one thing next turn. I got knock in arsenal, so if I draw a fistful of pumps, then we can just throw like a big old dominate. Oh, we're coming up on that too, so we can do quite a few cool things. Alrighty. Oh, wow, look at all my knocks just hanging out together. I almost wish he could do things this turn. I have too many cards. <sighs> do I block with one of these knocks? No, I don't think so. I do have too many, though. We're just going to have to bottom one of them. It's fine. I'll take it. Oh, he can make a vigor. He probably should. I do believe we're just going to send another dominated red. I should still have... Yeah, I got two left in deck. That's great. Release attention. Yeah, I'm going to leave that on top. It doesn't matter, does it? Um, knock. Uh, I guess he might have arsenaled a... Uh... A D-react. We did give him some wiggle room to do that. Uh, do I want to put an aim counter on it? Nah. Let's just uh, lace with blood rot. And fire it. Temptation to save codex there, maybe. Well, as a matter of fact, if he has stuck a D-react into arsenal, then I can... Uh, snap codex. Force him to do the interaction and then fire again. Yeah, I just wanted to get another dominate guarantee next turn, but I should have actually kept Codex here, I think. But we'll see. Let's hold the line. And that. Is that good enough? I don't think that's good enough. I think I still sneak over by one. I guess he's mitigating some damage. Not enough pumps here. This might be a good time to snap, actually. Mm. Okay. What do we got on top? Ravenous Rabble. Hmm. Let's dominate another red. We'll swap it with Amplifying. It's got Inertia stapled to it now. No. And we might snap into Codex this time. How many reins do I have left? One, two. I think I've played them all. Yeah, we played all the reins, so no reason to hold out for anything like that. Do we give it go again? We'll just be able to block. That's the trouble. No, nah, I think we hold off, actually. Yeah. If he had a D-React that he was going to play to ours, then we could, but... That's pretty backbreaking for him. We can try and find something better to do with that. Commanding respect or performance doing nothing. Uh, he's about to lose that... Um... I wouldn't mind finding a dominate, so I can block with this, but I just don't have a reason to. I'm not scared yet. He might find a reason to make me scared, though. He's got four coppers, so he could play 
blood in our hands real quick. I probably should have blocked with infecting shot there, actually, just to get the block value out of it. There's a pre med. Hmm. That's fine to leave on top. So I think we actually just got to pitch this away. Let me just play everything. Then we codex. Uh, what should we grab? I guess red would be pretty annoying. <laughs> yeah, let's grab red. Why not? <laughs> and we'll fire that off for 14, I believe. And then we just need to have like one more crazy turn. And I think he's pretty much boxed out of this match. Take it on the chin. So you're taking eight. Oh, look at that. Only taking two. But keeping a D react out of arsenal, critically. Give him a blood rot, critically. And getting a ponder myself. Critically. <laughs> oh, this hand sucks. Well, it's okay. Actually, you know what? This is one of the examples where Ravenous Rabble is going to be just fine. Ooh, and pump. Uh, that's actually pretty good. <laughs> uh, get that out of the way because we want to draw a pump. But yeah, now every single one of these Rabbles is going to say... Oh, I hope I don't derail one of my blues. Oh, no! Tarpid Trap! No! I should have just left that red on top. That really sucks. Man, how about Tar Pit Trap just feeling terrible? That's why in a deck like this, you don't really want cards like that. So, right, Remorseless is still going to be pretty annoying here. Oh, there's a take it on the chin. Should we zail you here? No, it's so bad if I don't hit anything. Oh yeah, I forgot the remorse. The, the pre-med was still floating. This coming in at eight is actually much better. <laughs> this is pretty bad for him. <laughs> mm, that's a great point, T. You said that a while ago, but that is a great point about making Codex better. Look at that. Got the blood in our hands. That's exactly what we wanted. I didn't even realize he still had three cards left. That's funny. Oof, a tufa. Oh, wow. This is pretty bad. We're running out of cards. Amplifying arrow is... Oh, well. But it's not exactly good enough here. Oh, we got that. We're fine. Okay. All right. So knock. Probably just send a big dominated infecting. Just because I can make it even bigger. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then we do that. We will pay. We will release the tension. We will fire for nine, dominate. And this threatens to get him into range of just being like one dominate away. It doesn't even have to be like a necessarily good dominate. But at the same time, you know, he he's finally got some wiggle room here. He might just pop off and mess me up. Oh, wait a second. Hold on. That was bad. You definitely snap there. You 1,000% snap there. Just because, like, why would I not? I need to threaten him as much as I can here. 
Because if he does have a blood in her hands or something like that, then it just screws me. Where this says, nope, I need more cards than that. You're at two. Give me another one. In fact, I think he has to give me two cards here. So yeah, that that's just game winning. Kept the blue. Oh, it was a blood in her hands. There you go. I had a feeling it was blood in her hands. That was like his only way back into the match. With four coppers, he could have done what? Like... Do, 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 do. Plus one. Attack twice. I guess he needs like go again too, though. I don't know. I might have been counting blood in her hands as being scarier than it actually was, but... That's the scary thing with Warrior, man. The first half of the match, it feels like you're doing nothing because they have all that armor. And then you start to get through because they can't really block well without the armor and an arsenal. So stuff like Seek and Destroy and Lace with Inertia just does so much work. And then in the late game, it gets scary because you start to run low on deck if things aren't exactly lining up. Like, let's see how many pumps I had left. One, two, three. Just three pumps left in the deck. So it's like... A little scary can you actually finish um but generally speaking as long as you play it mostly right you can get there like i i don't even think i did everything exactly right there i think there were some small inaccuracies but warrior's not so bad that's a lot thinner on deck though than i'd like to be i'm impressed with that kasai yeah not too shabby and they had i guess they're running this because it's more Azalea hate, but eh, I don't know about that. It just depends. Maybe if I was on the on the back foot at any point, I could have just gotten absolutely rolled there. But I'll take it. That's a that's another dub. Let's uh add it to the tally mark. Four and O. Oh. Anyway, so alright, back to chat for real this time. I got so distracted. You guys are actually saying things that I want to hear it. All right, do, 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 do. Rangers don't block. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh God, Alexi turn. What am I doing for the prism matchup? I'm just running Tar Pit Trap and a Merkmire Grapnel, but it's uh, very pr preliminary. I need to actually figure out like how much do I need to respect her. Do these cards actually make a big difference? Is part of facing Viz single clicking. <laughs> yeah, the clicking all the ruined chance against Viz is so annoying. Uh, that hand is rough. <laughs> you think so, T? I think she's okay. Uh, Azalea on the back foot is always bad. Of course, she doesn't ever want to be on the back foot. You can scrap your way out of it, but it's so hard. Azalea on the back foot is almost boned, like, already. <laughs> uh, would you like to see a victor game? Oh, you would like to see a victor game, uh, if we can find one. Um, usually want about 65 to 66. Really? I've been running a tight 60 for the most part, unless I'm going into something that's potentially fatigue. Then I go up to 66. He's just, what now? I understand 100% she more combo now and not control yeah there's definitely the magic number of copper okay good to know Mackenzie I had no idea um when spire sniper can't find you an arrow it will be here. yeah that's a great point when spire sniping doesn't find an arrow it is the arrow and that's why we run the yellow one but boy does it feel lackluster uh, I put in tar pit because I thought it'd be kind of cute. I don't. In retrospect, don't do that. <laughs> um, oh, Victor's a thousand percent the issue. You can beat him if you just run hot the entire time and throw like 14s that are dominated every single turn. That, that'll that win you the game. <laughs> but it's it's super hard. That and Bravo. You kind of have to just high roll them effectively. Oh, totally. I, 
I was trying to spam spacebar, but I think you have to click the little zero or the one as well. I don't know. Maybe it's the way I have my uh, Talishar set up. Alrighty then. Well, let's uh, let's get in one more game, shall I? And I need another beer, so I'll be right back. Oh, that was so fast. Oh no, guys. Oh no. Um, hello. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Are you someone from the chat? Do I even have a prison button? I do have a prison button. I think you do bring in Perchies just to try and deal with erudition, I think. <laughs> LOL, so ready. Uh, Ravenous Rabble, although if I ever attack an angel directly, she can just Ravages, um, but it's go wide potential, which kind of matters, but, eh, screw it, we're just gonna go aggro, um, no drill shots, bring in Tar Pits, uh, bring in Sleep Darts, bring in... I don't think frailty matters. Remorseless? Maybe take aims? I want to run a tight 60. Let's try it like that. All right. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Let's see what happens, chat. <laughs> I mean, hey, if we run hot, then we run hot. You know what second is where I want to be? Uh, for the most part. We'll see. Um, well, I mean, we kind of have to block it almost no matter what. So we're just going to block it. She's probably got a seven coming up next. I assume that's why she did this. Oh, no, it's a five. Look at that. And we can block five. We block five. <laughs> Great start. And she did an arsenal, a soul shield, like. No! 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 <laughs> it didn't even give me a take aim. <sighs> Oh, did I not run take aim? I may have kept take aim in the side form. Take aim can save you here, though. If there's an arrow in the top two, take aim saves me. Hell, top three, because I got a read. Do I play one so I have more odds to draw an arrow? If I arsenal one of these, then... Screw it. Let's just pass. I think that maybe just loses us the game. I think. There's the Bolton shot. Oh, come on. Add insult to injury. I have to get this arrow and arsenal to deal with that, too. Ay, ay, ay. And this might just be one of the matchups that you're willing to be like, no, I'm a dog into Prism. It's like, I have to fire an entire arrow at this freaking thing. And that's an argument to keep Ravenous Rabble in. I, I did keep it in, right? I think I kept Rabble in. I hope I did. I don't remember if I did or not. I should have, though. This is a Rabble matchup. Just because... Well, is it? It probably is. Because like, if you go wide, you're threatening her ward. Which is pretty annoying for her. Okay. Um... Oh, I can make her put a kind of medium herald in. Yeah, sure, let's do that. 
force her to put a blue or yellow herald into the yard. Um, doesn't matter what I grab because I'm just going to be firing it into some bullcrap. Um, what are you getting rid of? Bub? A passing Mirage. Yeah, it's not really going to matter against me. <laughs> um, yeah, just fire at Arclight. So we forced him to grab a Yellow Herald, you know, which is like... I'd rather be dealing with that than with uh, something else. Um, we can fire a fairly big Bolton Shot into red here if he lets us. So we actually maybe helped his turn now, because now he can double Herald where he might not have been able to before. Well, I can't really block this. We just got to hope that our go wide turn is good enough. He's going to go ahead and get the, uh, the party started up in here, up in this joint. Figment of Protection. Oh, he's not going to be able to swing the one out of Arsenal. I don't mind that. I don't mind that one bit. I'll leave that on top. Pre-med. Fire at you for seven. And we will load in and fire again off of Red in the Ledger. Oh, okay. Letting a shield deal with the final point. And wave of reality going to deal with it. That's pretty good. Tunic. Death dealer. Putting in red. Read. I'll leave that on top. That's a really good ponder target. And with this being for 11, I gotta think I'm eating his angel here, you know? If he has two, three blocks, then he can save a shield, but there we go. Now he's under red and seek, which is pretty gross. And I've got a ponder and a really good arsenal target. Uh, see, now the arsenal I gave him is paid off, except... I could maybe block this. We'd have to block it with some pretty... Hmm. I kind of feel like I should block this. That's the trouble. I really don't want to, but I feel like I should. If I can keep him off of another angel and off a of soul, I think it's worth it. If we can find something good off of spire sniping, then we're fine. I think we got to do it like this. I just need Spire Sniping to hit. Plain and simple. I really need Spire Sniping to hit. Or we could just send a Dominated Fatigue for eight. I kind of want to try and find something bigger, though. Yeah. Bottom that. I think I have to play for something bigger. I don't think I can get by on just that. Come on, baby. <sighs> Too bad he doesn't have any shields or anything, but that's fine. We can do it like that. Top, top. 
Azalea. Um, oh, I didn't bring in my quiver, so I can't give it the plus one. That's so annoying. Oh, well. Um, I think we save the Seek and Destroy, so yeah. We just fire it for seven Dom, and I'll make it a nine. Uh, I used to not bring in uh, Quiver against Prism because it's just another opportunity for them to uh, slam down like Arclight Sentinel or something like that. Uh, but I've the more I've played it, the more I've realized like it kind of doesn't matter. It's like if she does the thing, it's like Quiver is not what was going to give her the window to do it. She has so many windows to do it. So I think you just... You just run Quiver. You just should, um, in my opinion. Pierce Reality. Like it. Like it. There's Tar Pit Trap. We may actually want to try and get that bad boy into Arsenal. There's Red. Mm. Oh, we want to pump here, though. That's what stinks. But... Red restricts them to just one thing. Hmm. No, I think I'd rather have more potential damage. Hmm. Ugh, amplifying arrow is not what I'm looking for. You know what, though? If I can find another pump, we can make this amplifying arrow huge. Yep. Check this out. <laughs> you want to see a big amplifying arrow? <laughs> How big is this one? 16. With a ponder on hit, a seek and destroy, and a blood rat. And 16 should be pretty hard for Prism to deal with. We're all out of equipment now, except for our hat, but if I can get him on the back foot, then it almost doesn't matter. All right, he's taking it. He said, I'll take it. What are we drawing off of the ponder? Bolton shot. Uh, this is fine out of hand too, so yeah. Oh, perfect. This is like a great hand for this situation. Uh, no blocks. I'll say no on hit to that one. Stopping a shield and an angel, but he's probably got another hailed and knowing him. Oh, no, not erudition, but another red one. So he gained five health there, which is pretty annoying. But we are going to get to go Bolton Shot for seven into hopefully Remorseless for eight. Hopefully, if I can draw a pump, that would be sick. Oh. Oh, the Blood Rot's going to eat his angel. Oh, he didn't flip the angel. Okay. It's just going to eat the shield. That's good, though. Because now I don't have to worry about shooting through a Ward 4. Or a Ward 1. Man, Blood Rots are sick. <laughs> Blood Rots are so good. Oh, he's thinking about something. This might be an Arc Light. If it's an Arc Light, it might just steal the game. If it's Arc Light, I think he steals the game. Because I can't afford another... Well, he he can't swing a Herald if it's Arclight. So I guess it... Yeah, it doesn't steal the game. It doesn't steal the game. Um, but it's close. <laughs> That's tempting, but we want to just send numbers here, bottom. We just want to send numbers. We need to find a pump. Because 7 into 8 with Ponder on hit should be enough to steal this game, I think. Just because he's at 10, you know, like... Just depends. 
I'm glad he doesn't have the ward four, but he recognized that he would sacrifice that whole ward for blood rot if he had flipped it. Take your time, take your time. I just say no. <laughs> Thinking, please bear with me. No. <laughs> uh, I'd love to uh, pull off a dub here. 5-0 and o on the stream would be a little uh, personal accomplishment. I don't think I've ever pulled off the old 5-0. and o. On stream. <laughs> but yeah, the Battle Harden and the ProQuest Plus this past week in Atlanta was really fun. A lot of really good players there. Atlanta scene is super cool, super chill. Okay, we're blocking. You draw one of your D-Reacts, maybe? Ah, he's uh he's gonna use the, the block off of her turn this card into four block instead of three. I respect it. Trouble is, I never cared if that hit or not. This is the one I care about. Ah, oh, and we drew the fucking pump. Beautiful. This should be hard to stop. With only two cards in hand, and no armor, and no ward. Lace with inertia is about as good as we could have asked for there. That way he can't like arsenal something tasty. And again, we still got the fr the floating pre-med. Pre-med's insane, man. That card's so good. So we should still get an arsenal out of this. And then I think it's almost curtains from here. Almost. There's a world where he just eats this to throw back like a Pierce reality herald. But then he goes to one to do it. Because uh, it's going to hit for 8 down to 2, and then he has to throw something, so one more. Um, and that might not even be a blocking card, actually. That could be a figment, and that could just be trouble. Yeah, sure. I don't mind. And again, you know, it's like, it, it's almost like Azalea has game into everything. Because, like, we haven't even done anything super amazing this game, I feel like. But, like, unless you're just drawing terrible, terrible hands, like, she always has the opportunity to sling some pretty gnarly numbers. Yeah, so he's going to uh, fall to three, effectively one, because I assume he's going to throw something. Um, and... I think that was a red war tune that he blocked with, so that's probably now going to be coming out my face instead. Um, well, we can dominate for eight. We can actually dominate for nine. I didn't bring quiver. We can only dominate for eight. Um, hmm. Well, I could just block it out and then just send Endless Arrow for four. He has to give me a card, but then he has a three-card hand, and we're kind of in trouble. Um, we could uh, dominate into a Bolton shot, fire that, load and fire that. That's pretty back-breaking. Yeah, I think that's the play. So then I drop down to six here. And he will. Oh, yeah, the card did not block. Really good card, but didn't block that last turn. Um, I don't think he plays Merciful in this matchup. I think the only thing I'm scared of is like Ravages. I think I can drop to six and still get him. I think.
Ah, uh, he's still got Halo, though. Ah, uh, that Halo is probably going to be the difference, actually. If it weren't 10, if it were 7, I think I had... Yeah, I've got play if it were 7, because I can just give him two cards and that. Yeah. Oh, well. Um... Ponder gets around that. Bottom that. Um, knock. A Bolton shot to the top. Lace. Do the old Azalea. Seven with Dom at you. So this is going to get this out of the way. Then I load and shoot something else. He's at two, so he has to survive this. He's just going to give me a three block, though, and then probably let Soraya get eaten. Uh, so I kinda, I'm in the same position I was in before. I kind of need to draw a pump to make this Remorseless come in for eight. Crap, man. This is well played. By Andrew. I'm fairly impressed. And then you run into Bravo or Victor. Yeah, that's the one thing she doesn't have super good game into, unfortunately, but eh. It is what it is. Come on, baby. Give me a pump. Two times. <sighs> Couldn't get it two times. Well, I think that's going to cost me the game. He does have to give me two cards here, but then he's got an arsenal and a single card to throw something, so... I'm probably screwed? Probably? We'll see. He is at two, so I got that going for me. Ah, uh, but he's still got Halo. Yeah, there's, there's too much wiggle room for him. He's going to be able to get out of this. It's all right. We almost got there, and there might have been something I did wrong along the way. I'm not positive, but there might have been something. Yeah, and you know, we uh, we settled on Tar Pit Trap, and it was good when I when I used it. Um, but it's like a popper would have been better. But Tar Pit Trap has play into other decks too, whereas like, if I make room for Findel's Fighting Spirit, like what is it really doing? It's strictly just a popper and that's it. So, I don't know. It's a tough nut to crack. This is probably going to have to be uh, a focus to figure out what exactly you are willing to do for this. Hey, I win. Claim victory. <laughs> um, yeah, it, there's, there's going to have to be some dedicated time to really figure this out, figure out if you're going to do anything special for it. Um, oh, you know what? Uh, I knocked... Have I knocked only once this game? Yeah, I knocked and it was for that Bolton shot, but is there a world where I, uh... Does it get better if I knock for, like, Merkmire, Merkmire Grapnel there? I don't actually know. Hmm. End turn? Really? Wow. Okay, so his arsenal isn't anything too, too impressive. Spire sniping. Well, I can send a dominated seven. I don't think that's what I want, though. <laughs> did I bottom it? I did. Come on. Uh, whatever. Um, release. And... Spire. Pitching. I guess amplifying? I don't really know. It's seven dominate, so it 
could kill him. No, it can't. He has to heal Halo in response to survive. Ah, uh, crap. That's annoying. Did I shoot a dominated infecting? At any point? I don't think so. Um, oh, it's not even seven. It's just six. Why is this just six? Oh, he grabbed Triumph. Okay. Soul Shield? Soul Shield. Out of hand? Pitching what? Oh, he had one floating. Or two floating. Okay. Well, that's probably game. But let's find out, shall we? How to feeling that was coming. Oh, you know what? Oh, whatever. It's fine. I should have kept back my hat, though. This turns off the on hit, so it doesn't matter that this is a... Uh... Oh, can you play Fractal again in New Prism? You can, can't you? Good to know. All right, well, we still have a chance to find Dominate here. Come on, baby. Give me something on top one time. That'll do. Are we going to get there? I believe this is eight with Dominate. He hasn't played out his arsenal in quite some time. If it's Soul Shield, though, Rapture can save him. <sighs> yeah, I, I didn't need to give up my hat there. Um, and I probably even could have dropped a little bit lower. Soul Shield? Soul Shield. Oh, you were sitting on an arsenal? That's what you were sitting on in your arsenal? Wow, very careful. Oh, I wish this were a pump. I would have had you. Oh, for eight, because of your stupid thing. Hmm. And I don't have a Merkmire left. If I had a Merkmire, I could get you on this next turn. Crap. No, I wish I was on two Merkmires. Because I could knock it up and just lock with both of these. Hmm. Do we just knock up an endless arrow? I think so, actually. Yeah, I think so. Searing shot could be threatening and lethal here. Well, he would just use his rapture. He might even use his rapture here so I don't get the arsenal. We'll see. Has to give me at least one card, though. Want another soul shield? Oh, just waking up his thing. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, unfortunately, I just, I just lose, <clears throat> excuse me, I just lose here, um, but that's okay. Oh my gosh, the Pierce realities. Um, oh, nope, didn't mean to do that. Just wanted to arsenal. I mean, I've lost, there's, there's no way out at this point, unfortunately. He's going to send a triumph the size of the sun, and I'm just going to lose to it. Go ahead and send your next thing. It's fine. GG. Well played. Good game. I, uh, 
I wonder if there was anything I did wrong there. Thanks for the match. I can't remember off the top of my head. I feel like there might have been some slight inaccuracies from my part. Got it pretty close, though, and there were quite a few times I just needed, like, another pump. I'm down to 13 cards? What in the world? I just blocked with a bunch of them, but... Yeah, there was quite a few opportunities there where if I just had another pump, it would have been golden. Um, not bad, though. Kept it relatively close. Uh, there were some opportunities for Merkmeyer to shine off of Knock. So, yeah, there was definitely some potential potential yeah of course ggs uh what about when i blocked the secondary edition and i gave a bunch of stuff i went tar pit bolton shot skull bone um there wasn't any potential to do anything with bolton shot right because i could have gone just tar pit by itself or maybe yeah there there might have been something there i'm not positive but, eh, I'll take it. That was relatively close. Like, one better draw away from probably just getting them. So, yeah, I'll take it. That's not necessarily a good matchup. Not too shabby. All right, what are you saying, chat? Yep, really good game. Really good game indeed. I appreciate that. Thank you for saying so. Um, Well, let's go ahead and change that one loss to 4-1. Uh, and one. Didn't get the fabled 5-0, and oh, but 4-1 and one is not too shabby. I'll take it. <laughs> and uh, I do believe that's probably where I'm going to call the stream. Um, but thanks so much for coming out and chilling with me. Thanks for uh, checking out Azalea. I think she's really stinking good right now. I think you should uh, be you know, thinking about her, if not just to play, but maybe just to think about something you might run into at your pro quest. Um, there's, uh, there's certain cards you can run that would, uh, give her a bad time. Um, but she's fun. She's really good. I, uh, I'm be playing her this weekend at two ProQuest in Atlanta. If you're in town, please say hey. And, uh, yeah, if you ever have any questions about Azalea or any other decks in Flesh and Blood and you feel like asking, uh, some guy like me, why don't you reach out on, uh, on Discord, on Twitter, or maybe on uh, the Card Guys Patreon. <laughs> but uh, in any case, thanks for coming and chilling. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me on Fridays, and uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully you had a good time watching. Good luck with your Flesh and Blood decks this weekend. I hope you all kick some butt. Even if you're not on Azalea. I saw Max one, you know? I was just harping on how Max is a, a joke for Azalea. But a Max won last weekend at a ProQuest, so... I think it was in Alabama. So watch out. You might just run into uh, the, the off-meta decks, the decks that you don't expect to see, and then suddenly you're in trouble because you don't know what you're doing into them. But at the very least, I think maybe you'll know a little bit better on what Azalea is doing and maybe what you should be doing into her. In any case, thanks so much for watching, guys. This is Willie B signing off. Much love. <laughs>